Good morning, good morning, good morning to you, Grenada Carrier, Coop, P.D. Martinique, the rest of the Eastern Caribbean, the rest of the world. It's good morning, Grenada, for today, Thursday. It is the 11th day of April, 2024. Yeah, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope you had a restful night. And you're up and ready to face the challenges of today. All right, as before I hit the road running, I want to say a special good morning to you if you're a bus driver from Pedmota, Pedmota Junction. All right, your name is Isaac. Uh, someone, Mavis, or Mavis, uh, who is from uh, St. Paul's area, she rode on your bus last night, and she claims that she left her purse on the bus. Okay, she said she remembered uh, taking out the bus to pay the conductor, and she can't find it. Now, she's saying that she doesn't need the money in it, but her, all her documents are in it. All right, so please, if you have found it, her number is 407-5748. That number again, 407-5748. Uh, please contact her once you, you know, retrieve that uh, purse. And if it's not you or anybody who was on the bus or anybody who find that purse, please call Mavis at 407 407- Five seven four eight. Her documents are there and she needs them desperately, all right? Nice. Now it's time for your Hills and Valley Health tip for today. And this morning we're looking at preventing injuries. Now here are some simple steps that you can take to have an injury-free workout session. One. Every workout should, should begin with a warm-up and end with cool-down period. A warm-up helps your body get ready for exercise. It gradually increases your heart rate and loosens your muscle and joints. Two, when beginning a new routine, start slowly, then gradually build up the intensity, duration, and frequency. Three, don't overuse one set of muscles. Repeating the same muscle movements frequently can lead to overuse and injury. Change things up. For example, you may run on day one, lift weights on day two, and swim on day three, etc. Yeah. Number four, tailor your workout with for problem areas. If you have arthritis in the knees, you can gradually strengthen the knees, supporting muscles, and avoid exercises that hurt the joint. Ensure you consult your doctor about this. And five, listen to your body. Some may hold on to the mantra, no pain, no gain. But we must rest when tired and avoid pushing the workout to the point of pain. With patience and consistency, you can be fit without pain. All right, nice. So these are five tips on how to prevent injuries when you're working out, okay? Nice. It's 20, uh, 24 minutes until 7 o'clock. Let's see who's here. Well, Mary Banks is there. Good morning, Mary. Michelle Bernard, good morning. Sharon Bartholomew, oh, good morning to you. Eulin is also there. Good morning, Eulin. Mildred Smith, good morning. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine. Lydia Cameron, good morning. Jillian McIntyre is there. Good morning, Jelly. Uh, good morning, Sylvina Charles. Good morning, how are you? Agatha Noel, good morning. Yolan Swan, good morning, Yolan. How are you? Catherine Phillip, good morning. Hope you all are doing fine. <laughs> Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, you know, had some little technical difficulties this morning. You notice the obituary started a bit later than normal. Yeah, you know, when you're dealing with machines, that's the way things go at times. But it's now time for the program, the word of the day. And this morning, the word of the day it is a verb. And it is discomfort a discomfort d i s c o m f i t now to discomfort someone is to make them confused or upset discomfort is a formal synonym of the 
also formal, but slightly less so, disconcert. Discomfort. D-I-S-C-O-M-F-I-T. It is an action word. It is a verb. Yeah. Now here's how we can use that word in a sentence, yeah? Jacob was discomforted by the new employee's forward probing questions. Jacob was discomforted by the new employee's forward probing questions. Yeah, they just come on the job and they're asking all kind of questions because they want to get in line. You understand? He wants to get in line, so asking all kind of questions that you haven't heard in a long time. Nice. Good. Good morning, Nadisha. Good morning, Miss Auntie. Winifred Hancock and the folks inside of Castine in St. Andrew. Good morning, good morning. And Stella, good morning to you. Francis Balwant and family. Desmond Joseph and family, good morning. Yeah, the folks on the other side, uh, Ponda Rosa side, good morning. Saying good morning to my brethren, Zeggy, up there in Monlong. The Chateau family, good morning. Yeah, how do you do? The Adams family out in Monlong, good morning to you all. Good morning, good morning to all the wonderful folks inside of Monlong, man. How do you do? Debbie, good morning, and the folks inside of uh, Bacolet, Village Bakery, and everybody. Kitty Cat, good morning to you. Nice. It's time for the thought of the day, and it says, Each morning, we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. Yeah, you were dead in sleep, man. And you woke up to a brand new day, so start a brand new life. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to get up and go and marry a new wife or a new husband, but sometimes circumstances necessitate that, you know? If you have to do that, do that. But every morning we are born again, and we have that privilege to start a new life. So what we do today is what really matters most. I wish I could wake up in the morning and be debt free. <laughs> and that everything is all right with all the financial institutions. Good morning to the folks at Arisa. Mr. Herschel Whiteman and uh, uh, the rest of the team, good morning. Mr. Mervyn Lord, hope we get everything, you know, sorted out. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, what's buzzing this morning? Uh -huh, the Maggie King of the Grill. It runs, uh, comes up on April 4th. Not, not April, but Saturday, May the 4th at Progress Park. So big things are going inside of Progress Park come Saturday the 4th of May. That's not so far away. It's just about three weeks away. Yep. So I know all the chefs are preparing themselves, as Blossom would say, you know. That's not a real word, all right? That's Blossom's word, so don't, don't follow us. All right, you're in preparatory mode, and uh, are ready to give a good account of yourself. It's going to be a day of fun, food, and entertainment. Yeah, and you can also win yourself up to $5,000 in cash and prizes. In a bingo. Lots of local entertainers will be there also. Buzzing this morning, Prime Minister Dickon Mitchell leaves the state today. He's paying a visit to our old-time friend, Cuba. Yeah, he's going to meet with his Cuban counterpart, and he's going to have a very busy agenda. Yep, yep, yep. In the region, Caribbean Culture Fund information session on U.S. $250,000 is in available grants. That's set for April 15th. Sounds good. What do they intend to do with the culture, boy? Uh, give all artists a little 5,000 US, you know what I'm saying? 
so they can give some good quality work this year. Well, I mean, we give good quality work already. Internationally, the U.S. still deal under pressure as the board vote on tech, uh, takeover by Japanese arrival. That is controversial. Yep, yep. And in sports, uh, World Athletics to become the first federation to award prize money at Olympic Games. Yeah, the gold medalists uh, will be getting some money. I thought that was happening already. Trust me. You run your heart out, your soul out, your legs out, only to get a gold medal. Kirani, you miss out on that one, boy. <laughs> the Jaguar. Morning to the folks on the western side of the island. Guav and Gun Battle and uh, the Lance. And good morning to the folks at Kelly's Hotspot. Yeah, Malisa, good morning to you. How you do, girl? You all right? Dexter, good morning to you. Victoria, good morning too. Yeah. Hope everybody is all right. Want to reach out and say good morning to the Mac Mews right here in St. Agnes. Mount Agnes. And, you know, that's in St. David in case all you know, right? Kendra Alexander says good morning. Judy Lewis, good morning to all. Ras Tafari, good morning from the USA. Okay. Kathy and Adams, how are you doing, sis? Hope you're doing fine. How is Solange and Zuri and Kenneth and everybody? Saw Winston the other day, boy. Shaving his head clean so that he white here, which. <laughs> yeah. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I love you all, man. All the way in Florida. Margaret Alexander says, good morning, Mr. Joseph. Jerry Edwards, good morning. Morning, Jerry. How are you doing? Morning, legal counsel Jerry Edwin and family and your staff. Good morning to you all. Yeah, I hope you all are doing fine. Mr. God Williams and family out there in La Mode. Good morning. Razum and family. Good morning to you. Jahim and Karim and everybody. Derry, good morning. Nonetheless, folks, it's just about that time when we have to head on to the AM edition of news, sports, and the weather here. Uh, those of you who are on the television platform, we've got a rebroadcast of last evening's television news. Stick and stay with us. We'll be back after 7. Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Good evening, this is GBN's News at 7. Two members of the corporate community have stepped up to provide sizable donations to the victims of the Chantemel fire. Details in this Beverly Tellisford report. And today I'm here on behalf of Hubbard and the management of staff and our partner Argo Cement to pledge a contribution of $20,000 in the form of building materials. Household appliances, which we hope will go a long way in restoring the lives of the fire victims to a form of normalcy. 
That was Jonas Brown and Hubbard's Limited representative Wayne James as he announced the company's donation to the 17 victims of the devastating March 28th fire in Chanty Mills and Patrick. The support did not stop there, as the Grenada Cooperative Bank Limited also made its contribution of $20,000. Finance Minister at the bank, Dr. Aaron Logie, made the announcement. Today, the Grenada Cooperative Bank is pleased to announce that we are making a contribution of $20,000 for the restoration of uh, the houses that were destroyed by the fire. We also like to commend um, our partner, Hobbit, who partner with us to make this event a reality. And uh, we make a special appeal to our corporate citizens, our corporate organization, to come on board and to help make a difference to restoring what the fire would have damaged. These latest donations are part of Corporate Grenada's continued aid in the reconstruction of the five families' homes. The representatives from both institutions presented the checks to the Shantymel Fire Victims Relief Committee on Tuesday. Three families have since been temporarily relocated to the low-income housing unit at the Villa St. Patrick. Parliamentary representative for St. Patrick West, Joseph Andal, at the handover ceremony, expressed contentment with the show of support displayed by the Grenadian community in assisting the families. Tragedy sometimes brings the best out of us. And it is kind of unfortunate sometimes that it takes bad things to bring people together. But we always have to look at the positive side. And remember the saying of the older heads that a bad breeze never blows. So even as we commiserate with the people who suffer, suffered these losses, many of which are irreplaceable, we need to embrace the opportunity to help them rebuild better than before. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Dave Benjamin, the convict, ser convict serving time for the murder of American tourist Je Jessica Kolker, faces 39 years and nine months behind bars before he becomes eligible for parole. Details in the support from Nisha Paul. This decision comes after his appeal of the life sentence originally handed down for non-capital murder in connection with the death of 39-year-old American tourist Jessica Kolka was upheld by the Court of Appeal. In January 2016, Dave Benjamin was sentenced to life for the murder of Kolka, who was reportedly raped before being found dead near a beach in St. David, where she was last seen walking with her husband. Husband. The heinous crime was committed approximately two months after Benjamin was reportedly released from prison after serving seven years for rape. In handing down the initial sentence, Justice Paula Guilford stated that Benjamin displayed no level of remorse and referred to his crime and disposition as perverted and sadistic, a total disregard for human life. However, his attorney Andre Thomas held the view view that the sentence was excessive and took the matter to the Court of Appeal. When the Court of Appeal sat in Grenada in January, the judges upheld the sentence but remitted the matter back to the High Court for an assessment of the minimum term Benjamin must serve before becoming eligible for parole. As part of his sentence, Benjamin, who has been imprisoned since his arrest in 2016, is required to undergo counseling and therapy and psychological assessment. Reporting for GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Minister Tevin Andrews is making a plea for swift justice, not just for the late Esther Patterson, but for all children who may be suffering in silence. Beverly Tellisford has this report. Minister responsible for Karakou and PT Martinique Affairs, Tevin Andrews, passionately called for justice in the tragic case of 14-year-old Esther Patterson, whose life was cut short on March 8, 2024. As, as Member of Parliament for Karakou and PT Martinique, I continue to advocate for justice for our friend and sister Esther, Esther Patterson, who was, was murdered and, uh, uh, of course, in the most gruesome way possible according to the to, to, to what we were to, we were told 
as we continue to advocate for justice for Esther. Minister Andrews underscored the significance of addressing not only the immediate circumstances surrounding Esther's death, but also the broader issue of child abuse, including child sexual abuse. He urged anyone with knowledge or suspicions of such acts to come forward and cooperate with the authorities through the established channels. And continue to call upon the citizens of Caribou and PD Map, they can be extension Grenada. If you know of something, please speak out. You know the hotlines, you know the, 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 the you know you can reach out to, to people within social development, various government agencies and industries to speak up, speak out about whatever issues that you're having, uh, especially to protect our children, our boys and our girls. 30-year-old John Kendall Alexis, Esther's stepfather, made his first court appearance on March 12th, charged with non-capital murder in connection with her death. Alexis's next court appearance is scheduled for April 16th. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Encouragement for young lawyers to embrace criminal law practice amidst concerns over the diminishing presence of legal professionals in criminal law over the years. We get more in this report. In response to a declining number of legal practitioners specializing in criminal law, Attorney Francis Paul, president of the Grenada Bar Association, is urging newly admitted attorneys to consider practicing in this critical area of law. With only a handful of approximately 80 practicing attorneys at the criminal bar, he highlighted need to bolster representation, particularly in the high court's criminal jurisdiction. It is quite an untenable situation, one that the bar is um, gravely concerned with because, as I indicated, there has to be a balance. And now that you have the bench has been augmented with Justice Innocent, you have Justice Guilford that has been sitting since the 10th of March alone until January when Justice Innocent um, took up office in Grenada. So now that the, the bench is augmented, you have the bar um, unbalanced because you have now that um, attorneys who used to be appearing fixed before the court are no longer appearing. Um, happy to say though, there are attorneys who have taken up the mantle of um, assisting pro bono. The Grenada Bar Association, under its newly formed executive, is actively exploring innovative strategies to spark interest in criminal law among young leaders legal practitioners. Paul said practicing at the criminal bar will provide young lawyers with a valuable courtroom experience while simultaneously addressing the shortage of legal representation in criminal cases. The idea came up of why not um, bring it to the GLC to say that you know you have the younger attorneys up here, you have them do maybe one or two matters and they get credit which can go towards the, the application of the practicing certificate. Because now all attorneys to practice in Grenada, according to the Legal Profession Act, you have to apply and obtain a practicing certificate. You have to have a certain amount of points during that year, which comes through continuing legal education. So if the younger attorneys can do one matter and appear before the court, then that can go towards their continuing legal education and thereby they gain points, whether it's three or four points, okay. towards their practicing certificate. In light of the current landscape, where the number of practicing attorneys in Grenada remains limited, initiatives like these are crucial in sustaining a robust legal framework that ensures access to justice for all citizens. Citizens. The call to action serves as a reminder of the pivotal role lawyers play in safeguarding the rule of law and upholding the principles of justice within society. Reporting for GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. It will be the host country for the next Sustainable Tourism Conference to be held later this month from April 22nd to the 24th. Christina John has the latest preparation plans for the event. 
Adam Stewart, executive chairman of Sanders Resort International, will be the keynote speaker at the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Sustainable Tourism Conference, which will take place in St. George's, Grenada, later this month. Carl Grant Hashialik, chief operations officer at the Grenada Tourism Authority, said this conference is the Caribbean region's premier event, which creates an avenue for high-level networking and regional dialogue on issues, challenges, and opportunities for sustainable tourism. We have over 40 speakers that's going to be coming to Grenada to discuss, um, you know, the matters that are facing Caribbean tourism and sustainability and where we go from here. Um, the program is designed in such a way where we have um, panel discussions, master classes, and also uh, study tours. And at the study tours, we will have those um, uh, participants um, having a sense of what Grenada is doing on a sustainable tourism perspective. So we have some tours that are designed for them and they'll also be going to Karakou as well. So programming, right? So the programming starts on Sunday and that starts with the media breakfast and orientation and that's going to happen at Six Senses and then we roll straight into Monday um, and on Monday what we're going to be having is the official opening um, ceremony and I will go straight into the um, keynote speaker who's going to be Adam Stewart and, and then that rolls into the different panel discussions etc for the rest of the day. With the presence of over 20 regional and international media and 25 Caribbean tourism organization members, Hoshialik hopes that this provides a perfect opportunity to expose pure Grenada to the world and what's unique about us. The sessions will take place at the Radisson Grenada Beach Resort Convention Center. However, there is a registration process for the event. Uh, what we hope to achieve is to really be able to lock down who we are as pure Grenada the spice of the Caribbean. We really are a sustainable brand. We really are about our sustainability, our ecosystems, our community work. Um, you know, civil society does so much. And I mean, this actually then falls on Earth Day as well. And I know that, um, you know, community, be it Specto um, and other organizations, they're actually getting ready to do a lot of significant work. So for us, you know, we want to be able to bring to the table at this conference, you know, what's the sustainable tourism means for Grenada because of course um, you know registration we have a lot of um, regional international registrations thus far and but of course we're calling on the local community to also register because we need them to participate their voice is important as well um, you can go on to caribbeanstc.com go into registration and it will give you an idea of what the, the, the different prices are so we have a price for the um, for NGOs, for nonprofits, there's a price for the students, and there's also a price for local delegates as well. Several local stakeholders are involved in the rollout of this event. The theme for the Tourism Sustainable Conference focuses on the five P's as essential pillars for Caribbean tourism sustainability, which are planet, people, prosperity, purpose, and partnership. Mrs. Hoshialik elaborated on the theme. Now, these five pillars are actually the, the links that links every single aspect of the program for the, um, for the event. So you'll find that we have created a program that speaks to each part. Um, so when we talk about, um, say for example, planet, we're talking about preserving the preserving this planet, the Earth. When we're talking about the people, how do we engage? We just finished having our forget independence. How how does our indigenous and our traditions fall apart of that? When we're talking about prosperity, how are we ensuring a community as part of the conversation? Where it is that we, we intend to go? How do we look at those opportunities to be able to look at that? And of course, that links with purpose. As Caribbean tourism sustainability, um, as we as we chart our way forward, what is our purpose? How do we make sure we define our spells, our define ourselves and our voice in this challenging time? Um, you know, and then of course, at the end of the day, without your support, your network, your people around, partnership is absolutely critical in making sure that we are successful. What we're doing. The last Sustainable Tourism Conference was held in 2019. Chrislina John, 
GBN News. The Grenada Beauty and Wellness Association was officially launched on Tuesday. Stakeholders and industry leaders gathered for the official launch at the Point Salines Hotel. Trisha Thomas, president of the association, says it will further the advancement of personnel in the field of beauty and wellness through education, networking, advocacy, and community engagement with customers and clients. She issued a call to practitioners within the field to get registered. We are therefore making a special appeal to all individuals within the beauty and wellness industry here in Grenada to become registered members of this association. To name all hairdressers, hairstylists, locticians, barbers, beauty therapists, massage therapists, nail technicians, tattoo artists, and persons performing body piercings. Far too long, we as practitioners here in Grenada in the industry have operated without any formal order. We now aim to rectify this to ensure a comprehensive and inclusive understanding of the industry's ethics, guiding our growth and development, and service to our community. Registration is set to begin on Monday, April the 22nd, 2024. Minister of Health and Wellness, Philip Tallisford, spoke about government's commitment to its success. You have spoken, and we have listened, and we are prepared to work with you. So let me be the first to tell you that your government, through the ministries of health, mental health, wellness, and religious affairs, and the Allied Health Council of Grenada will work with you to help establish industry standards by ensuring that products and services offered in the market are safe, effective, and of the highest quality. We will also advocate for ethical practices, sustainability, and equal access in this rapidly growing sector. Stronger you are, the more organized you are, is the better positioned you are to get government support. So as Minister for Health, I want to personally encourage you to see this as the beginning of new and bigger things to come. So organize, promote, and protect Yes, protect what you do. Starting with standards, establishing standards for the various craft. Minister of Mental Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, Delma Thomas, has welcomed the newly launched Grenada Beauty and Wellness Association as a means of dealing with mental health issues in Grenada. We explore the linkage in this report by Janelle McDonald. Beautification of oneself can be deemed as a coping mechanism for individuals who suffer from mental health issues. That's according to the Honorable Delma Thomas, Minister of Mental Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, who has given her full support to the newly launched Grenada Beauty and Wellness Association. I welcome this new venture and commend those who are involved in this new wellness center that involves massaging. Massage helps with depression, it helps with anxiety. So it is not only a means for pampering, but it's a means for of relaxation. And people who have mental health challenges can use it as therapy to help deal with the particular situation. So I want to commend them and so I want to encourage families, you know, to, in terms of body gifts and other wedding anniversaries and so special gifts you can give families a chance of massage or some other therapy in terms of beautification. It makes you feel feel better about yourself. You can sit and take care of your hair and take care of your and all that. So I I welcome those new initiatives. I know there are many other cities in Grenada and so anything that can assist in mental health is highly appreciated. Massage therapist Perlin Henwood says her clients use her services not only for relaxation but also to alleviate stress through meaningful conversations. The 
Melissa was saying earlier um, about mental health and all of those things, it's really important because not only the physical parts of it, people come and they, they share. Sometimes people share so much that I'm like, hmm, TMI, TMI. But um, it's an avenue for them to vent um, with confidence. Melissa Jones Gittens, owner and operator of HD Lady, believes beauty and wellness play an important role in dealing with mental health. Mental health, beauty and well, wellness treatments can have a significant impact on mental health. They provide opportunities for relaxation and self-care, which can reduce stress, anxiety and depression. Practitioners often create safe and supportive environments for their clients, contributing to their overall mental well-being. Tackling mental health challenges from various angles continues to be of paramount importance to the ministry. And Minister Thomas has given the commitment of this administration to support initiatives geared at doing just that. For GBN News, Janelle MacDonald. The sun sets in paradise. It's time for your GBN ISA. A sunset in paradise is featured in tonight's GBN ISA. The sunset, captured from Paradise Beach in Karakou, painted the sky in beautiful hues of red, orange, and yellow. Voted the best Caribbean beach in 2022, this beach lives up to its name, Paradise. The beach, located in the village of Leste on Grenada's sister isle, Karakou, boasts crystal clear calm waters and a stretch of gleaming white sand sprinkled with sea grape, coconuts, and almond trees. These photographs are compliments explore Karakou and PT Martinique. We thank our citizen journalists for that submission. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. On Saturday, May 4, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to $5,000 cash in bingo. Interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register. It's the Maggie King of the Grill competition at Progress Park St. Andrew. Gates open from 12 noon. Bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details. Maggie King of the Grill is made possible by Bryden and Miners, Hunts, the official barbecue sauce of King of the Grill, Rubis. Get Rubis, get going. Independence agencies, agents for Swiss products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy T Rental and Sounds. Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza, kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers on Sunday, May 5th, at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoah Gayan, Ricardo BB Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Weekend. Be there. Keeping up with the kids' growth spurts might mean it's time for a bigger fridge. Don't worry. At Quartz, we got you. Or maybe you're ready to turn your home entertainment up a notch. That means a larger TV and sound bar. We got you. Excited about making your new home feel more like you? We've got you. Need a better mattress for more restful sleep? We've got the size and comfort that's right for you. So shop today and pay later. Whatever you need, we've got you. Courts, bringing value home.
from the fertile heart of Grenada to the far reaches of the globe, Ram's Supermarket brings together the best of both worlds. Savor the freshest locally sourced produce from our trusted Grenadian farmers and explore a curated selection of top quality international favorites. Experience a shopping journey where warmth meets a world of flavors and affordability meets premium quality. At Rams, we welcome everyone to discover the joy of global and local culinary delights. Nestled in Sugar Mill Grand Anse, we are open all week to offer you a taste of home and beyond. Rams Supermarket, where our family, community, and the world come together. We are the good food people. reliable, affordable, and customer-friendly pharmacy? Look no further than Hills and Valley Pharmacy, the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider. We are committed to serving you at convenient locations. Find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medical supplies at Church Street, Hillsborough, Karakou, Jubilee Street, Grenville, St. Andrew, near the bus terminal, and Halifax and Grenville Street, St. George. Our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our Medcare Center on Grenville Street where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations, and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your healthcare needs, including competitive prices, loyalty rewards, and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. Good morning, folks, and welcome to the conversation for today. It's uh, the f 11th of April. It's uh, 14 minutes after 7, and um, a lot of things are there to be discussed. But once again, I want to make that special appeal to a bus driver in Pedmota Junction area. Isaac is your name. Uh, Mavis, who rode your bus, Mavis or Mavis, who rode your bus last night, uh, is claiming that uh, her purse fell out on the bus uh, because she said she knows she had it on the bus because she took out money from it to pay the conductor. Now she is in really, really dire need of that purse, especially with the documents. She's not too concerned about the money, which is a good sign in this day and age. Maybe she must be wealthy, all right? But um, if she gets the money, she gets the money. But really and truly, her main interest is the purse with the documents, all right? So anybody finding it, please drop it to the nearest police station or call Mavis on 407 Five seven four eight. All right, please, 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 please. Let's be real Grenadians with this one. All right. And um, I am semi happy to report that uh, you remember last week I announced that Bishop George Fletcher from Birch Grove lost his bull and three rams. Well, I was reliably informed that he received, he got back the the bull. But the the Rams, uh, I'm not too certain about that. I tried reaching reaching out. Bishop trying to reach you, but I ain't getting you, man. All right. So um, yeah. But this issue with pretty Larson and so much more. Um, what's there to talk about this morning? A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, a lot of folks called and reached out to me after that interview yesterday with Hamlet, insisting that Hamlet must come back. Uh, Hamlet, I know about that one, and I want you by me to regular you. You, you know, you're not such a nice guy. But <laughs> um, something that I, I heard in the news this morning, 
you know. Um, before I go there, let me go to the caller. Good morning, caller. Mr. Joseph, good morning. Greetings, how are you? Good morning. I'm I good. trust that all is well, Mr. Joseph. Listen, we have a couple of things to talk about, her, but let me leave that day all for now. Here, now. People reinviting Hamlet, Mark. Were you impressed anyway yesterday morning with the things this, this um, speculator had to say? That's all. It is. If this is the hallmark of journalism in Grenada, well, I'll be doggone. As a matter of fact, there was, a, there was a certain point in that interview that I couldn't understand anything that individual was saying. Come on, let's leave the bar in this here country and don't quote-unquote elevate these farces, as it really is. If this man had any interest in independence and the forward advancement of this country will take up the matters related to... You know that evil man, Mr. Joseph, before I go, let me just tell you this. There is another so-called journalist that interviewed, called me and asked me for an interview on matters related to people with disabilities when I told him that it was. He canceled the interview. That scribe, that Pharisee, that hypocrite. Mr. Joseph, people like that are the kind of people that this country needs not have to be highlighted. But they are right because they're Grenadian too. But they, you know, these are the people, Matthew 23, Mr. Joseph, I ask you to get your pastor to preach about it. They stand in the doorway, they allow no one to go in, but they're not going in themselves. Whitewashers of sepulchres with dead men's bone. People who watch good and call it evil. These are the trucklers of this country that are depriving the people of this country for the advancement. <laughs> for what it was. What it's worth, pardon. Have a nice day, will you, Mr. Joseph, sir? Have a good one, caller. Have a good one yourself. 18 minutes after 7 o'clock. There's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment in Grenada. Let's go back to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Morning, Mr. Joseph, and morning to your listeners and your viewers. Um, well, I'm very well program. disappointed that there was no time to interact with Mr. Mark yesterday. Because some of the things he says, some of it I could agree with it, but I think he's written as he has, has mentioned. For instance, the dictatorial tendency of the former Prime Minister of Grenada. And the fact that it's been the NMP have been the least democratic, one of the least democratic institutions in Grenada. Notwithstanding, they've been, um, uh, been propelled into into office time and time, but we know, we know the, I mean, those of us who understand knows the sort of reason why. It's like a woman or anybody, let me change this, let me just put the, the gender neutral, a person in a relationship who is abusive, and, and he alluded to that to some extent, who is in abuse, an abusive relationship who continues to stay because of the lack of confidence in themselves and the fear of having to be on their own. Um, some people who support the former regime um, was because they were made dependent. But I want to deal with an issue. He talks about, I mean, about illegitimate C uh, uh, in terms of the current leadership of the NNP. And um, what I want is, and in a way, I would concur with something with one with a sort of uh, spirit of the last caller. Um, in terms that there were issues that he never dealt with. For instance, the former prime minister went into parliament illegally, and I say that without any any remorse. Went into legal. When you um, when you say illegally, how, how, explain that for me. The constitution says that if you if you have sworn allegiance to a foreign power, you, you are disqualified. I think it's uh, some Article 33 of whatever section or so. I'm not familiar with it at this moment because I've not dealt with it for a little while. But it's there. You, If you accept, and this is the reason why he was pursuing Peter David, uh, when, although Peter David did not uh, flaunt the, that, he didn't violate that because he was a common citizen. And um, he went three times to court against Peter David. And we, we see the, the double dealing, the double standard of this man. And in fact, it's unfortunate, just like, Gary, just like the late Sir Egg 
went to his grave with the, with the, with the party, just so this man, maybe and a good thing because the creation of the United States is a product, LMP is a product of the United States created in Union Island. So the fact is that the, 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 the man himself, uh, no, his spokespeople said when he was, when that became an issue in, after 2008, in terms of they trying to prosecute him, he, the U.S. people came out and said, well, he lost that when he became prime minister, which means, I mean, uh, he lost the dual citizenship when he became um, a, a prime minister, which means he'd been in, 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 in parliament all along illegally. So it's illegal. Don't forget, and I know I can't stay long as, for the morning, but don't forget that how he ascended to power in the NNP was not altogether honest. I had co people who were involved in it later confide to me that it was illegal. It was not legitimate. They okay. bring delegates. He brought delegates to the to the convention that was not qualified. I could talk from a Victoria point of view, especially. Thank you very much. I could go on, but I mean, this man yeah. should be. Okay. Okay. Asked Thank to you, Colin. On the holiday. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Colin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, accept one of our WhatsApp callers and say good morning. Good morning, Mr. Joseph. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. Tivoli. You, 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 you was in Tivoli, our school, of course. Um, school teacher. I, yeah. I also been to Tivoli school too, yeah? Okay. Right. Okay. My contribution today. The grill fest what they're having in Grenada. What a wonderful thing. The what? So what we need in Grenada today is stuff like that. What bring less violence, empower the young people and empower Grenadian people to make money and stuff like that. However, the thing what they had in the stadium we, we shouldn't have that in Grenada. Why? Tell me why. Me. Tell me why. That's all. Okay, so I've done with that, yeah? Okay. All right, thank you, caller. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution. That caller seems to have a problem with the show, man. I don't know. Steve, you had to talk to that man. You know? <laughs> 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. Yeah. That's the time. It's uh, the conversation for this morning. Let's go back to the telephone line and say, Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, welcome to the program. Greetings, greetings. Uh, uh, this, uh, not, uh, I wasn't on the radio, but is this morning open for any, this, any discussion? Well, not any discussion, but I'll accommodate you. What do you want to talk about? Okay. I want to follow up on a call that was made uh, yesterday morning. Um, one of the callers spoke about uh, preservation of original species of crops grown in, on island, yeah? Okay. Now, this is something I've spoke, I've spoken about before, and I'll be speaking over and over about it because when we talk about food security, we are talking about preservation of our indigenous crops, our indigenous, the the original species of crops. We over the years have seen a depletion in the production of. Of, of our original crops. One, coconut. We, we, we are, are not hearing people talking about planting the tar coconut trees, the original species of the coconut. Everybody is planting the grafted coconut. At the end of the day, the, the grafted coconut cannot produce oil. People are people who are, are making coconut oil in Grenada imports coconut from St. Vincent, where they get the original species, the original coconut. We need to preserve that because at the end of the day, we would not have the, the quality that we're looking for, right? Okay. The next thing is banana. After we have had a tissue culture banana growing in Grenada, our, our original banana, long banana, 
we we not get another game. I used to get we used to get a bunch of bananas as tall as as five feet, and and I mean a lot of greens in one hand, long hands, long long greens. We not getting that again after tissue culture. And I see my I see I plant me and my father we plant that tissue culture in our land and. We, from one bunch, from from one stool, we only get like three bunches of banana, and all, and and that's the end of the banana stool. Yeah, there, there, there's there, there's a school of thought that the tissue culture, whereas the original banana that you're talking about, those that we we grew up with, you yeah, you, like and grow Michelle and yeah, you get a number of suckers in the stool. But it is uh, it is a, there's a school of thought that says the tissue culture banana gets you get a, a maximum of three or four suckers from the stool. Yeah, and that's it. And when when they when they bear, that's it. That's the end of that stool. You have to you have to buy plants again. You understand? Whereas before we we didn't have to. There was no need to buy plants. The same thing is happening with corn. Now, when we someone I might have the original species of corn, and I plant in that. But on the other side of the of my boundary, um, Tommy is planting the GM, the genetically modified seeds. Now, when when both of our crops come up, they cross pollinate, and so his GM is interfering with my original. And so when I plant seeds from my what I, what was original, then it was it was. Because after the cross pollination, it gets contaminated. Yeah, it gets contaminated, and then I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, plant, plant it back. When I plant it back, yes, it might grow, but I wouldn't get a, a, a yield like the original yield that I'm custom getting. So can I in, can I interject a little humor into this? Put up sure. put up a signpost on on your bank. You saying no cross pollination, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will have to, I will, I'll have to, I'll have to be putting up that sign for the wind, <laughs> and for the bees, and the, the birds. <laughs> Paul, the, the truth about it, that is just the, the that that is the, the, the direction the world is going. It's not, it's, it's, it's. We, we just gotta get with the time because th there's no yeah, going back to it. Yeah, what? But, but still, when we're talking about food, food security. Yeah. Listen, when, when, let's say, for God forbid, something happens, some, some global catastrophe take place and we have to plan food our we have to sustain ourselves okay if if we have to depend on outside for the seed what's going to happen to us yep because because already we cannot we cannot uh, uh save an air of corn that we plant to plant back next year we have to go to the 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 um the we have to buy. We yeah, have to buy yeah, the yeah. mm -hmm. So if, for, for some instance, we cannot, uh, we we cannot, we, we don't have the seed, and we have to buy, and and no seed is coming in from outside. What what's what's gonna happen to us? Okay. Well, so we have. I hear the prime minister going to Cuba and talk, you know, and with his his compadres over there. I hope you know Cuba being a you know highly. Um, efficient uh, as far as agriculture is concerned. Yes, medicine, yes, but agriculture is But I hope that will be some sort of, you know, I hope you listen and you take this for a food for talk, for talk. He listens, he listens. So, um, <laughs> PM, you know, see what you can do for us farmers in Cuba while you're up there in Cuba, right? Let's get some, yeah. Re yeah. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> that food security thing is, is important. Right. Have a good right, one. Yeah. Eh? Keep, planting, keep planting, keep planting. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Blessings. All right. I want to talk about Nawasa. Everyone complaining. I am complaining too. I am joining them. I just visited Grenada for Carifta. Nawasa turned off the water every day, and when the water was turned back on, it was brown. That is unacceptable. My Grenadian people don't deserve this. This cannot be healthy. Come on now. We are in 2024. Which part of Grenada you were when you came? 
and also good morning miss claire yeah yeah <laughs> zai good morning to you know zai saying uh they have uh installed some the ministry of works erected some metal humps in the grenville bus terminus it is a criminal act damaging your vehicles shame on that minister good morning caller yeah good morning Good morning to you, sir. How are you this morning? We're just quiet, you know. How are you? I am alive and thankful. Okay. I, I, I like the front of your last caller. You know, but um, let me tell you something. Sometimes I, I am really tired. The mind is just tired going around and trying to sort things out. What happened to our culture? And I'm talking about the black culture. Yeah, can't we do things for ourselves? I, I have been noticing this thing for quite some time and discussing it also with the right people. Uh, indigenous plants like the stash mango and the long mango and so forth, they're getting too tall. We need to actually propagate those things so we could get, it, get them going short. But who to do this? Is it the government? We can do these things for ourselves. For lot of things we ask in building, we can do it to ourselves. So when we allow the, the foreign things to come in here, the seeds, um, and then we have to throw out our um, what you call indigenous seeds, who to blame for that? We to blame. So we, we have to take responsibility. We need ourselves those things because we are not the thinking people. And that's one of the problems here. We have to be independent thinkers, you know. But um, morning, Mr. Rulo. There's two things that's on my mind and it's really, really hurting me. <clears throat> As I talk about the change of culture, new people coming here and, and in other words, um, integrating in the society is, is creating a problem to me. Um, the situation with the drug bust at Latans, yeah? You know, it's worrisome for me because all this talk about the economy, growing the economy, management, etc., etc., putting people to work. And if you can't put the young men to work, and I have a problem too, personal problem. The, the hardest thing to do is to be good in this world. The hardest thing to do is to develop yourself. Everybody pull you down. So if you cannot do the things that is good and you cannot do the things that is bad, where you are? So if the guys cannot get work to do, you cannot put them to work. You educate them and you just have them lining on the, 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 the road. What do you want them to do? They're going to gravitate to those things. Okay, it's wrong. But what else if you can't get a job and you have to survive? The second thing, sir, I am discovering that our high-end jobs are not belonging to us. And I've been talking about this for quite a number of years. I'm not saying, and I don't want anybody to tell me that we have people working, um, green agents working overseas, because my children are overseas and they're doing well, rightly so, because we're not economy of scale, and we cannot provide jobs for our citizens, so therefore we have to find a place to put them, yeah? But when you tell me you have certain jobs available here, and you have to import people, to do the jobs, well, we have people here, I believe, with the capacity. I have a problem with this, yeah? I discovered that all the organization, governmental organization, is going foreign CEO. Why? I don't want to name people on the radio, but we have people here who can do these jobs. Why are we importing people to do the job, displacing our Grenadian people, to put these people there where we have nowhere to go? I'm really asking the government. I'm not talking about this government because I've been talking about this for quite a number of years. I'm asking the government, please, stop the practice. If you cannot find people here to do the job that you want to do, I would understand. But seek it out. Throw it out there to see who will actually apply for the job. If you can't get anybody, well, you will have no choice. But if you could get people, why you have people at the high end occupying our job? You know? I I'm saying that the practice, the practice should be stopped. I couldn't agree with you more, Carla. Yeah? Yeah, we can't I, continue this thing. I, I, That's not what I, I work for. I, I go from, from te, eight year old, ten year old, I plant in nutmeg and cocoa. I contribute. To the to the growth of the economy for our Grenadian people. No, no, just to just to just to add to you, someone says because they don't want to pay the locals, they rather pay the outsiders. Yes, that's what happened because a prime minister sitting in office said 
I am not going to pay a Grenadian more money than I am working for to work in my office. You know what? So he hired somebody uh, that was in the Ministry of Finance. He hired somebody from the outside whom he could pay $30,000 a month, but he wouldn't employ the Grenadians. So this is wrong. So when you have things like the Latin situation, the European situation, it hurts me very much. Okay. You leave no space for the Grenadian people to develop. I, I, right? can, I can hear your passion. You're getting me upset. Please, don't, 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 don't take it on too much, all right? Get I have to, sir, because I have not traveled <laughs> anywhere to make a dime. I grow right here. <laughs> I develop right here. Ma, and ma, give ma, us a chance to do that. Man, I'm trying to pacify the thing, man. Just, you know, <laughs> just take a chill pill now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have, have a, a good day. one. But a point well taken, and it's a very salient point, you know. Um, th there's another tweak to it as well. Um, there are certain jobs... It is claimed that Grenada doesn't have the, um, we don't have the trained personnel for it. Well, here, we'll have, here, here is where I'm going with this. Here's a, is the, 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 the um, what you call the um, University of the West is relevant, just as the United Nations, they're not relevant. Because we're supposed to produce people, we're educating them. On what level are we educating them that they can't do the jobs that we have here? So I blame the University of the West Indies. Hence, yeah? hence the reason why I keep saying we have to revisit our education system in Grenada because, I mean, for example, Barbados, Jamaica, and other, other territories like that, they invested a lot of money and uh, resources in the rounded education. For example, I studied in Barbados for quite a while, and very... Very close. I mean, close proximity, you'd find polytechnic centers. Oh, yeah. And we don't have that in Grenada. Oh, yeah. So in Grenada, you either become a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, a police, or you become... A bus driver. <laughs> have a good day, caller. Have a good day, all right? Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, it's 22 minutes on to 8 o'clock. We take a commercial break. We'll be back after these messages. Don't you go anywhere. Grenada for decades. We are the number one and largest electrical supplier. Hi, welcome to Sunny Electrical. How may I help? We offer electrical wiring accessories, tools, and appliances for all residential, commercial, and industrial applications, which is what we are known for. And we expanded our products with new innovative ways to modernize your home. New homeowners will be captivated in our lighting showrooms. Some more pendant lights here. These are very multifunctional because they can work for kitchens, living rooms, bedrooms. We have a wide selection of lighting, ranging from indoor to outdoor and solar. We are also available for site visit services to assist you with selecting the perfect light for your forever home. We are located at Dusty Highway in Grand Anne, St. George. Sudden Electrical. Best value, expert advice, quality products. We hope to see you soon. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Are you a VIP? Have you taken the necessary steps to safeguard your child's health? Let's get it right. Get your child on their vaccination schedule. Our national protection and coverage is our national priority. Our actions will impact Grenada's health and wellness. Let's make childhood immunization and vaccination number one. I am Senator Jonathan Lacret, and I am a VIP champion. Let's make all our children VIPs, vaccinated, immunized, and protected. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. In honor of the Grenada 50th Independence, the Royal Grenada Police Force Band presents the second annual Mother's Night Out. Mother's Night Out. The concerts all going down on Sunday, May 12th from 5 p.m. at the Grenada Trade Center. Featuring live from TNT. It's crazy. It's time to come. America will have a black president. John King. June Lodge. 
together with the Hitman Inspector, Valine Ned, Samantha Dixon, Alex Philip, Shane, Innocent, General PP, Kareem, Alexis, Ron Barry, the African Man, and much more. Dress code elegance. It's Mother's Night Out, the Grenada Trade Center, from 5 p.m. on Sunday, May 12. Lots of giveaways and prizes to be won. Champagne and roses on entry. You don't want to miss this amazing experience for mothers. Your tickets only $70 and are available from Kittens Pharmacy in Grand Dance and Grenville, Grenadian Optical, the Police Bandhouse, Police Canteen. Make this a date for mothers. Mark your calendars, football fanatics. The GFA is turning 100 this year, and we're ready to celebrate. It's GFA's Legends Weekend, a three-day extravaganza, kicking off on Friday, May 3rd, and running all the way till Sunday, May 5th. Witness history in the making. The Caribbean taking on the world in a clash of legendary international footballers on Sunday, May 5th at the electrifying Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Get ready to roar with the crowd as iconic legends like Emmanuel Adebayo, El Hajj Diouf, Alex Song, Michael Essien, Luis El Matador Hernandez, Shaka Hislop, Asamoa Gayan, Ricardo Bibi Gardner, Russell Latapi, Shallery Joseph, Jason Roberts, Dexter Dabs, and a whole host of superstars light up the pitch. From breathtaking goals to unforgettable memories, GFA's Legends Weekend promises an epic celebration of football you won't want to miss. Keep your eyes peeled on GFA's social media for the full squad reveal. GFA's Legend Weekend. Weekend. Be there. On Saturday, May 4th, there will be a shift on the island as the biggest grilling fest in Grenada moves to the Big Parish. The Maggie King of the Grill Competition is at Progress Park St. Andrew. Come taste the most sumptuous creations from the grill as top chefs and food enthusiasts showcase their culinary skills. Maggie King of the Grill is a festival like no other with live soca music, fun attractions, and games for the entire family. Then from 6 p.m., get a chance to win up to 5000 dollars cash and bingo interested vendors and grillers should call 456-3454 to register it's the maggie king of the grill competition at progress park st andrew gates open from 12 noon bring your appetite and stay tuned to this station for more details maggie king of the grill is made possible by bryden and miners hunts the official barbecue sauce of king of the grill rubis get rubis get going independence agent Agencies, agents for Swiss products, Grenada Paper Product, Grenada Bottle and Company Limited, and Waggy T Rental and Songs. All right, welcome back, viewers and listeners, to the conversation. Let's head straight to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, you and good morning to the listeners. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. I, I want to address an issue that was raised by the last caller. Well, two issues. Um, I know he's a product of 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 of, of um, the government finding a job that he should do. But let, let me say that I I believe that there's a lot of opportunities out there that people, even if they are highly educated, can get themselves involved in that can be self-sustaining. And the area is agriculture. We don't have to depend and wait on the government to create opportunities for us. Yes, there are some areas that the government has to create that opportunities, but a lot of them could be done by the people themselves, by getting, in, getting involved in agriculture, where they can be independent and making much more money than some of the lawyers and, and people who's working in office, office, office jobs. So I don't, and I know he, he sometimes gives a lot of advice, but this one to me is out of work. Because what he should be encouraging people to do is to get self-sustaining employment. And there is a lot of that, especially in agriculture, where they can be independent and make a lot more money. But the other point that he raised, I think, is very critical, is that of those investors investor who is coming in and bringing in expatriate to manage the higher echelons of those companies. The government needs to, to pay careful attention to this thing. There are local people here, and I believe that it should be started at the inception of those people wanting to invest here. You can't
cannot allow those people to come in here. And you have qualified people, qualified people in Grenada, and they are being left out for those possible expatriates. You in, you importing them, and, and 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 they are not better than people here. We are well trained. There are some people who are well trained, especially in the hotel industry, but they are not given the opportunity to perform because of this. I mean, I, I want to call it a lack of policy. And the government, I want to call on the government to mandate those companies. We have to ensure that it happens. If we don't, if the government don't ensure that it happens, it will continue. There is, in my understanding, a level of racism that is taking place at some of those um, establishments. And these are things that the government has to look into. We cannot just pass it like nothing. They are important. They are affecting the country. So that would be my, my perspective this morning. Thank you and have a good morning. Thank you very much, caller. Have a good one. Saying good morning to you, Mr. Crawford Best, and the folks at the Country Kitchen at the same time. Now, this uh, uh, WhatsApp contributor says, Mr. Innocent, uh, there is a problem brewing. For some reason, Ariza is not telling the people exactly what is happening. It's been three weeks that I have been trying to access my funds and cannot. What is here? Whenever I use the I attempt to use the ATM, it spits out my card. Had to be had to quote this carefully. Um, financial institutions, please come clean. Tell us what's happening. If you cannot handle it, bringing foreigners to handle it. The hackers are smarter. Okay, caller. Mm. Wow. Let's go to the telephone line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. Innocent. How are you, sir? I am alive and thankful. How about you? Pretty quiet, doing what I have to do as usual. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Innocent, somehow I get the feeling that we stand up in Grenada, but our eyes, our ears are elsewhere. So the information gathered from elsewhere, when you go to your brain, it processes for elsewhere and not where you're standing. Let me get this thing straight. So therefore, you become a misfit. Now, if I am an investor and I go in a country, wherever that environment in that country is conducive for my investment and I am accepted, I would put the condition to safeguard my investment, which means managers is critical. Management is critical. Hear me. I am using a simple example for Grenada and Grenadians and myself. The poultry sector. There is no secret. You have Caribbean agro. You have Georgia Forgains, you have Brighton and Miners, you have Country Coastal. Why government, the Grenada government, cannot call these people in along with the government themselves and give them a mandate? And that after that mandate, you know, would decide whether government would control quality. The Poultry Association in Grenada would control or operate production. And these present distributors would continue distributing. And Caramana Agro, with what arrangement and conditions arrive at, would supply the feeder. Here is another idea. Farmers producing corn, dry peas, whatever, 
that is also ingredient for the feed for the chicken. Everybody is involved. Why we don't look at that? And it remains all Grenadian. Mr. Innocent. Yes. Wake up. Wake up. So asleep, Wake asleep, up. Asleep, asleep in on the radio. What happened? I don't know where you did, sir. Forgive me for being um, <laughs> kind of erratic. But I pass passionate right now. Yeah, I know. I could hear it. I pass passionate because the potential is here. The people is here. What we waiting for? My next issue is the key stakeholders of the private sector. You go into it and find out where it is and where they are. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one. All right. This uh, WhatsApp contributor says, Nawasa cannot do it alone. The water retention problem in Grenada is a bigger environmental issue. Too much removal of vegetation on hills and mountains, slopes, and construction of concrete structures on such areas with no proper planning. Down slope runoff on these concrete structures are creating havoc on our landscape. Yeah, you have a, a real point there. Let's take this caller from our WhatsApp platform. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Mr. Joseph. How are you this morning? I am alive and thankful. How are you? Well, just quiet for the time. Mr. Joseph, I want to touch on an important aspect of Nawasa. I'm not trying to attack Nawasa, but um, statutory bodies I want to look at. Okay, go right ahead. I'm wondering, all right, if you follow the history of Nawasa, first, before it becomes Nawasa, it was Central Water Commission, and I stress on the aspect of water. They move out from Central Water Commission, and they give it the name National Water and Sewage Authority, and they issue a bill. Now, when you go in and pay your bill, whether that bill have sewer service included in it. No. If you print a bill and you say you're charging for water and sewer, it means that you ought to be providing sewer service throughout the country. As far as I know, sewer service has been provided some part in Point Lynn, some part in St. George's, some part in Granans where they have sewer pump, but when you step out of some areas, people have the individual sewer system to the home, or uh, they may have the pig toilet or whatever. I've seen the um, sewer truck the other day going in the ministerial complex to pump out the sewer. Now, if you're charging people and the bill, that you say Nawasa and you call yourself a sewer service, it means that you should be providing sewer service throughout the entire country. I think Nawasa need to explain that to us. Whether on that bill it's water only they are charging or whether sewer is included there. If that's the case, Nawasa is supposed to, you know, our connection because they have a metering system, they're supposed to have charge as such on the bill. People that are connected to the sewer system, the charge goes in because you, you have accounts, you know the metering system. And those, for instance, St. Andrew, St. David, wherever, St. Patrick's, no sewer system, then your bill should be in a manner that you're charging only for providing the service of water. We have a consumer protection authority in Grenada. These are things that you have to look and see whether these statutory bodies sometimes are robbing the ordinary consumer. So I would like to hear from now, sir. Explain that to us. You have National Water and Sewage Authority. You have a bill stating that. Explain whether that's just the name 
but it's only water service you're charging for or whether sewer service is being included in that bill. And if that is what you're saying, then it means Nawasa owes everybody who does not connect it to the sewer system a rebate on the bill. So I would like to get um, Miss um, Jamilia Lewis or somebody <laughs> to come and explain the hey, bill, bill system. Partners, leave Jamila alone, please, know. okay? Leave ja Listen, uh, yes, what, what let, 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 could I ask you a question, sir? Yes, go ahead. What constituency are you contesting the seat? I'm contesting the seat for the entire parish, not just constituency. Which parish? St. Andrews what? and the rest of the, the country. Because I like to see consumers being treated fairly. If that is some the of these statutory bodies. If that is if that is the case, partners are not only voting with one index finger and are voting for you with all my fingers. All right. Well, <laughs> let, let it be like that. But I, I want now, sir, because you see, Point we have so much complaint. People talking about now, sir, they're not providing water. Yeah. Not, and I keep saying, for the amount of water we have in Grenada, we shouldn't have that problem. Now, sir, could do some more development in providing more efficient service. Well, I know they so are they, they are in the process of doing some 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 um enhancement on the on the system, but thank you very much caller. Yeah? All right. Have a good one. Have a good one caller. Let's go back to the telephone line. Good morning caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Yes, sir. Um when now our sack charges and the bill comes out. Now as if you are not on the sewer line or you do not you are not connected for sewer. You are not paying for that charge, okay? If you do not have that, because throughout the island, right, throughout Grenada, um, the system is not fully yet developed to accommodate all the consumers on the sewer system. That will take millions and millions of dollars. As a matter of fact, I'm not saying it should not be done. The whole situation is that even look at the cheap costs, we pay for water, and people are finding it difficult to pay for water. And finally, the caller who said he was here from wherever he was, and he came back for Karista and he got dirty water, I'm upset with him because he sounds as though now, water is supplying dirty water through the length and breadth of Grenada. There are some factors that have, will contribute in the dry season to water being discolored. I traveled overseas, even in the great United States, and discolored water flow in the past. So I do not like when Grenadians go overseas, come back, and making it sound so ugly and so bad. Uh -huh. I can say that the National Water and Storage Authority has evolved and has grown by leaps and bounds. Okay, with us as Grenadians developing it, with workers and locals managing it, it has grown by leaps and bounds. Probably one of the companies or entities or statutory body in the whole nation that has grown beyond anyone else with the little resources that Nawasa has had and with the small pay we were receiving at one time. But today it has been transformed dramatically. Nice. And I do believe that, well, Nawasa is guilty probably of not educating the general public about the strides. Okay. that the organization has made. Thank Have a nice day, my brother. Thank you. Have a good one yourself, folks. This is where we've got to wrap the program up this morning. BBC is calling. It was a very interesting and exciting program this morning. We look forward to another engagement in the morning. If the good Lord spare lives. I love you. Bye-bye. We've got to go. Bye-bye.